So now I want to introduce Ajay Nada Vahala from our development team, and he's going to provide a live demonstration of the PNS orders portal, walk you through some features, and he'll be highlighting um, some new changes that the you that you as users should know about. So welcome, Ajay. I'll let you take over from here. Sounds good. Thank you, Lisa. Good afternoon, everybody. Next slide, um, by the way. There we go. All right. So um, as Robin just mentioned, a couple of portal features that I wanted to highlight that would be available starting next Monday. Uh, we are adding four new user roles that will now be able to access orders and manage delegates themselves. Um, and those roles are licensed midwives, physician assistants, nurse midwives, and nurse practitioners. Uh, next, we're also adding that self-service feature where users who are using someone else's license can unlink the license from their account so they don't need to contact GDSP. Uh, next slide, please. And some additional portal items. Um, I'll be covering some of the existing functionality, um, such as managing delegates, adding your NPI number, using the save draft feature, and how you can also view results from the portal order screen. So I'll be going through each of these topics more in depth in just a moment. So with that said, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, could we stop the sharing, please? Thank you. Okay. So currently I am, um, so I'll go over the managed delegates and the new user roles that we're adding first. Um, so currently only physician and surgeon and osteopathic physicians and surgeons are the only roles that are allowed to add delegates. But moving forward, again, licensed midwives, physician assistants, nurse midwives, and nurse practitioners will be able to access orders without having to be added as a delegate. And so right now, I'm actually logged in as a physician assistant, and I'm here on the profile page, and this is where I can add my facilities. I can add my NPI number. The NPI number is used for billing purposes, and so I just want to note to everybody to please review this field on your profile page. Next, we have our facility locations. Here, I've already added two facilities, just to test facility one and two. And for the purposes of this walkthrough, I've already filled out my profile beforehand, but I do wanna emphasize that this is no different than what is currently in the system for existing users that can access this page. So for all the new user roles that are now going to be allowed to create their own profile and manage delegates, it's going to be the exact same. So with that said, I'm now going to review some of the functionality of managing your delegates. I'm going to navigate to the Manage Delegates page. And so here I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new delegate. And I want to talk about the access expire zone field. So as Robin mentioned, starting um, next month in February, we will be updating this uh, field from 90 days to 180 days. Uh, where you have received a lot of your feedback that 90 days is too frequent of a time period to consistently renew delegates. So we are now going to be extending that to 180 days. So access only needs to be renewed twice a year. And so from here, we also see the two facilities that are on my profile. And so for this delegate, I'll just go ahead and give them access to this first facility, test facility one, and click on save delegate. And from here, I will land on the Manage Delegates page where I can then see that newly added delegate. And furthermore, you can also filter via your active and inactive delegates to get a sense of uh, who are still active and whose access has expired. Um, for inactive delegates, you can simply uh, reactivate them by clicking on this checkbox and clicking Extend Access. You do not need to re-add them as a brand new delegate all over again. Furthermore, you can also edit delegate access um, by changing the access expire zone field by clicking on the row of the delegate, and then you can modify that access expire zone field. And you can also delete a delegate. Um, I do want to note one thing, and it's that if you are deleting a facility from your profile, um, that will also remove the access your delegate has for that particular facility. So for example, for the delegate that I just added, 
I assigned them to test facility one. Now, if I delete test facility one from my profile, that delegate won't be able to see any of the orders that were placed from that facility. So it's very important to keep in mind when deleting a facility, if you already have orders submitted from that facility, and if you have any associated delegates you assigned um, because, you, uh, because they would lose the access to view all of that information. Um, but if you being the provider or the delegator delete the facility from your profile, uh, you'll still be able to see all the orders that were submitted from that facility, despite it not being on your profile anymore. So I wanna make that distinction very clear. With that said, I'll move on to the prenatal screening orders uh, to view orders and their associated results. So from here, I'll just click on prenatal and click on screening orders from the dropdown. And on this page, I wanna point out a few of the ways you can narrow down a particular order or even a result from this page. So here you can see I have a handful of orders, some of which are in a submitted state, some have results available. Now, if I was looking for an order to see if it has a result available, rather than sifting through all of the orders that are on this table, I can simply deselect all of these different statuses and only keep the result available status checked. And the table would then display all orders that have the result available status. And doing so will give me an immediate way to show which orders have that result available. I can also take it a step further. Um, if I know when the corresponding order was submitted, I can change this created date range to narrow down the number of orders. By default, it shows me all the orders that were submitted in the last one year from today. But over the course of one year, you can only imagine how many orders would be uh, would be populating on this table, uh, especially if you're part of a high volume clinic. Another uh, neat trick that you can do to find an order um, is you can click on Control F on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac, that would be the command button and the F key at the same time. And from here, I can see that a search bar appears and I can actually type in the patient's name. And we see that it immediately highlights that patient, and I can immediately then see the status and that order in general. Another way to filter through orders is you can click on these columns to sort by ascending or descending order, or by uh, alphabetical order, depending on the type of column. And as Robin mentioned a bit earlier, another feature that we're going to be releasing next month is the addition of a resulted date column. So we'll be adding a column to this table called resulted date, which will show when an order has been resulted. And similarly, you would be also be able to sort that column by most recent to oldest date. Now, I want to move on to the three different icons that we have on the far right side of the table, the result, copy, and delete functionality. So if this eye icon is blue, um, this indicates that a result is available for it. And clicking on the Clicking on the icon will immediately download the corresponding results to my local machine. So this means I don't need to copy the TRF number and the patient date of birth, but rather I can immediately access the result directly on this page without having to go into the results portal. Now, if it's gray, that simply indicates that a result has not been posted for that particular order. And you can also verify that by the status. Next, we have the copy functionality, which means you can copy um, the patient information that is in one order to another order without having to re-enter most of that patient information. So let me show you what exactly that means. So here I have a submitted CSDNA order. So I'll just click on this copy icon right here. And then I'll just navigate through these pages. And by default, it sets the order type to MSAFP. Click on confirm and continue. And as we kind of uh, scroll through the page, you'll see that most of the fields have already been pre-populated from the information that was provided in the CSDNA order that I had submitted earlier for the exact same patient. And so this makes it much easier where you don't need to re-enter all of that patient information again. And so it's very handy um, if you want to save some time and don't want to re-enter all of that information. And so for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to scroll all the way down 
Um, for this demo, I'm going to, rather than submit this copied order, I'm going to simply save this order as a draft. And clicking on save, it's going to add this order as a draft to the prenatal screening orders table. And we see that draft order that we just saved at the top of the table. And so the draft functionality is very handy. If you wanted to prepare ahead of time for a patient's appointment, you can copy or when starting a brand new order, pre-enter all of the patient's information and rather than submitting it, save it as a draft. And then on the day of the patient's appointment, you can verify all of that information again and then submit. And furthermore, you can also edit a draft order and make any changes that you see fit. Um, and for any reason, uh, you can also delete it uh, if you don't need to submit that order anymore. And lastly, you can also click on the row of any of these orders and doing so will take you to the um, order record page. And this is where you can see the PDFs that were generated for that corresponding order. Um, for MSAFP, let me just open up a CFDNA. For CFDNA, you would be able to change your disclosed fetal sex selection from no to yes. If a result is available, you can also download that result from this page, as well as copy that patient information to another order. So to summarize, I strongly recommend everyone to use these filters um, because it can drastically help narrow down any orders that you're looking for um, and to utilize many of the features that we just covered. So now I'm going to move on to the last new uh, functionality that is being introduced, which is a self-serve option to unlinking a license. So we have seen quite a few people creating portal accounts and using their provider's license information to pass the ideal DCA verification. And needless to say, this presents multiple issues. And let's say when the provider themselves are creating a portal account and they try to pass the ideal DCA verification, it shows them that their license is already in use. And so from there, they would need to contact us at GDSP and we would unlink the license from the back end. But starting on Monday, people will be able to do this themselves. So let me walk you through an example. So I'm currently logged in. And as we can see, I have uh, a number of orders that were submitted. Some are in draft today, some are have results available, but I'm actually using someone else's license. So what I'm going to do to unlink this license from this from my account so the provi correct provider can use their credentials to log in is I'm going to click on my name at the top right, click on my profile, and from here it will navigate me to the profile page. And under the email and medical license number card, I see this unlink license. I'm going to click on that and it displays a pop-up that reads, Unlinking this license number will remove access for you and all active delegates from creating and viewing prenatal screening orders and results. If this license number belongs to someone else, please notify the licensed clinician to authenticate their portal account with the license number after unlinking license. To regain your access to prenatal screening orders and results, please remind that licensed clinician to add you as a delegate. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on unlink license. And so it will take a few moments for it to execute. We'll give it a couple of more seconds. And from here, I land on the dashboard. And so if I were to click on the create slash view orders again, I'll actually be displayed with the ideal DCA verification page, which is indicative that the license credentials that were associated with my account are no longer associated to my account and unlinking the license was successful. So now let's go ahead and log in as the correct clinician. I'm just gonna back out of here and sign out. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in as that brand new or as that correct clinician. And then I, I will click on create slash view orders. 
and I'm displayed with the ideal page, but since I'm the correct clinician, I'm going to go ahead and enter in my license credentials. Then I'll go ahead and authenticate my license. And from here, I'm going to land on the profile page. And you'll see that everything on this page right now is empty. Um, but if you remember, there are quite a few orders and results that were posted from that previous account, which was using my license number. So if I wanna see all of those orders that were submitted that were associated to my license number, so that way I can still track all of those orders for my patients, I can click on the move orders and facilities button that's on the same card as the email medical license number. So clicking on this would display a pop-up that reads, there are prenatal screening orders that were previously submitted from your license number before it was reassigned. After moving previous orders and facilities, remember to add delegates to ensure your staff continues to have access. Would you like to move all previously submitted orders and the associated facilities to this account? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the move orders and facilities button. And it'll take a couple of moments here as well as it migrates all of those orders and facilities to my account. And from here, we're immediately navigated to the prenatal orders, prenatal screening orders page, where I can then see all of those orders that were originally submitted from the previous user. That way I don't lose track of any of my patient's orders and I can continue to follow up. Now, if I were to navigate back to my profile, we can also see that the NPI and facility locations have also been populated um, from the previous uh, user. But it's extremely important to verify all of the information on your profile page, just to make sure um, it's completely accurate, especially with the NPI number. So another thing I wanna know as part of unlinking a license from uh, your, from an account. Any delegates that were added by a user that unlinks their license would also lose access to the portal. So it's very important that if a user does unlink a license that they notify the correct provider that they can associate their license with their account, but to also add back any delegates that were originally added by the prior user. And once those delegates are added back, they can then regain their access. So that is how you can unlink a license from your account if you are using someone else's license. Um, so there's no need to contact GDSP. Um, so with that said, that concludes the demo portion of this meeting. Um, Lisa, I'll hand it back to you.